Hello everyone, I'm Shawe. I work at Eastern Foundation Consensus R&D team. So this is a lightning talk um, of the consensus PySpake. So um, you can find the code base with this URL or the UR, uh, QR code. And this is a CC0 open source Python project. Now we have like more than 100 contributors so far. And most of them are actually Eastern core devs. Yeah, thank you for your contributions. Okay, so this project has three main purposes. So first, this is um, the center of Ethereum core consensus space. And second, it is also an executable, uh, verifiable Python program that you can use it to run the consensus logic with. And the third, um, it's also uh, our test factor generators for the CL clients, the consensus layer clients, to test their implementations with. And so um, if there's a new features that we are thinking about to apply it in the uh, consensus side, like the beacon chain side, so um, you might try to prototype it with the markdown files that I will introduce later. And and we implement it in Markdown files, and we'll do the test. And the test vectors would be generated with the uh, Python programs test case, like the PyTest, if you have used Python before. And um, for client teams, they can download the, Py the test vectors to test their implementations. So um, as if you understand this process, you can see that, oh, sorry, um, the spec is now um, important and unique component in the whole CLRD process. And it also helps us to find some very basic bugs that before clientings started to program, to actually prototype and test it. Um, also, it helps clientings to um, think with the uh, core specs more efficiently. The reason why we chose Python instead of other language was that because it's probably, I think Python is probably the most readable um, programming language for most developers. Like you can say like Python are just pseudo code. Okay, now let's see how to read it. Ew, so I shouldn't stand it. <laughs> so this is the specs folders. And here you can see some, um, the blue ones are the mainly hard forks that have already be implied and the yellow green uh, parts are the working progress features. Also, inside one of the directory, you can find that the specs are actually written in the markdown files. The most important entry might be the beacon chain uh, spec, and as there's also like fork choice or P2P interface in it. And we can define the constants and of uh, configurations, just like you are writing Markdown and in the tables. So, looks like this. And we also define the classes, uh, the SSZ containers. So, um, listed objects are for the consensus objects because uh, we use it to do the serialization uh, in the consensus object. Uh, also, this is the example of the state transition functions. We can just write down the uh, speak, uh, write down the Python functions in the code block of in the markdown files, and um, and also you can see there are some assertions. So if the input is, uh, if the assertion throws and um, exceptions, then we could say that okay, the input is invalid because it doesn't pass the test. Okay, there are some more useful links for you to understand more about the spec itself. And also, um, so this is a elf, I so call it an elf in the, Py, uh, in the Py spec, in the setup.py file. So it is the program that helps us to parse the markdown files and convert them into a Python program. And so the readers, they don't have to read in the, the, the .py file, they can just read the markdown files, which are more readable. You know, 
example of um, so if the phase zero is the base layer of all um, consensus specs. And Altair, if you want to understand Altair, you have to uh, merge, <laughs> merge, um, extend, um, extend the phase zero specs and the new features in the Altair. So, and as well, the bell tricks, they have to merge three of them. So I have one minute step to do how to use PySpec. And so installation is easy, just install from PyPI or from source code with this command. Okay, this is a very basic hello world example. And this is a symbol to, you can just write hello world into the gravity of the beacon block. And in the first line, is, uh, you can import the whole many Bellatrix specs as we need it to speak like that. Mm, you can use it as a playground and see the example code in PySpec to try to play with it. Okay, this is how to write your first PySpec test case. Okay, you can, there are already some existing um, helper functions to help you to prepare your, the beacon block or to manipulate the beacon state with. And there are some assertions here, these are uh, for us to set our uh, test scores of this test case. And important part is uh, here, like you can see there are some yield, uh, Python yield comments. Uh, it is us, us to, for us to output the test vectors. For example, this one we output the pre-state and the side become blocks and the post state. So output file will be there, and this is a pure function for the client is to test with. Okay, documents, if you want to see more documents, please see the URLs. And okay, so this is the most important page actually. So how to contribute with PySpec? Uh, if you are interested in the helping with consensus layer R&D, I think PySpec is a really good start to learn and contribute with. And there are some different labels that you can participate in. And you can do it from just fixing a little typo or to submitting a bug report. And if it's got accepted, and I think the EF will be happy to um, give you the rewards. Okay, and we also have, are looking for some uh, in-house resource to, for PySpec implementations. So uh, if you are, interesting and feel free to reach out to me or uh, if you want to participate or have any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Sean.